My top boss, have you ever been called for an emergency and used a tester to test for electricity and you find that there was a presence of current in the neutral line? This is a very, very rare occurrence and in case it happens, it means that there is a problem in that particular circuit. Today, my top boss from Eldoret, my namesake John, asked this question on our live session and he was asking what will lead to you testing the presence of current in a neutral connection today we are answering that thank you so much my top boss john from eldoret polytechnic for the question now let us dive right into it what can lead to the presence of current in the neutral connection when you use this tester my top boss a neutral line in any electrical installation is a return path to the source, the source being the transformer. In the event that there is current presence in the neutral line, it simply indicates that there is a loose connection, let's say in that entire circuit, be it on the main switch or where you have the neutral bar connecting that particular circuit. In case it is outside the consumer unit, it means it might be in the meter box, the drop cable, or at the point where the drop cable is in contact with the national grid. All of these occurrences, one or the other, may lead to what we refer to as a loose connection on the return path or on the neutral, leading to a floating neutral. A floating neutral will definitely result into our tester test the presence of current. All of those factors contribute to an issue in the electrical system and probably your customer is affected in this manner that they might receive an electric shock which will definitely lead to serious burns on their skin or probably death. This can be to the person that is operating appliances there or probably a pet that may come in contact with metallic surfaces of any appliance or electrical system in that installation. Number two, there will be damage to electrical appliances. If at all the return path is compromised, then it means that the current will definitely be high affecting electronics or electrical appliances. And number three, there will be damage to property. This floating neutral can result to a fire. This fire will definitely come out of any loose connection to that return path, therefore leading to any arcing or sparks which may escalate into a fire. In most cases, I've been insisting on tight connections, especially at the ceiling. If at all a connection in the ceiling is compromised or it is loose, and you have this issue of a floating neutral, that particular point will be a point of weakness and it will be hit hard by a return neutral or a floating neutral, therefore leading to a spark or a flame that may escalate into a fire which may engulf the entire property, bringing it down to ashes. So top boss, you must be very careful about that are you looking forward to enhance your skill set when it comes to domestic electrical installation i put together a course where you will be able to learn more when it comes to domestic single phase installation i have done an electrical installation in a three bedroomed house from start to the end and i've demonstrated more on my practical board and I have explained step by step on the entire process. You will learn a lot, enhance your skills, and be able to earn from your skills over time. The link is on the description. Hope to see you. Click on the link that is on the description. Okay, let's get back to the video. If this neutral connection disconnects at the point where we have this DPMCB, that is what we normally refer to as a recipe for disaster, my top boss. The reason why, once we disconnect the neutral at the DPMCB and then put the switch on, it means that 
this live connection will go all the way to the bulb should we allow the current to flow through the switch by putting it on the current will flow all the way to the bulb or whatever load that we have connected but the return path has been compromised remember for any circuit to operate properly, it has to flow from the source, which in our case is the transformer. Through the live connection or through the face connection and then back to the source to complete its circuit. And the return path is definitely the neutral wire. Once you cut the neutral wire, when the live or the face connection is through a load, you create what we refer to as a floating neutral. A floating neutral will then result into the blowing up of this bulb or the damage to an electrical appliance. So if we compromise the return path, that will be a big issue. What if you interrupt only the face then there will be no problem simply because it means that there is no current flowing to an appliance or a device or a gadget. And therefore that means that there is no presence of current or electricity. So that means that there is a blackout basically. But if we interrupt the neutral, there is an issue. This is a 16mm drop cable which is connected at the national grid Pole, which is serving the property of a single phase connection to the electricity. This cable can be compromised in the manner that if at all it has a joint in between and then the joint is loose, especially on the neutral connection, it will spike up the voltage and it will compromise the return path, meaning that the neutral connection will definitely test for the presence of current on that tester. If at all at the point of contact on that neutral conductor on the national grid is also loose, it will mean that there will be that floating neutral. Now, the reason why there can be a loose connection at that particular point of contact could be that when the person that was connecting this drop cable did a shoddy job at ensuring that the connection was not tightly done. The loose connection may be as a result of use of a wrong tool or a wrong method of connection. Another issue is that due to wear and tear or overtime, this connection or point of contact has been compromised. Other issue is that you will find that if that pole was knocked by a vehicle and then it was leaning on the opposite direction, causing a strain on this drop cable so that it stretched beyond the limits, then it will compromise that point of contact. So on the drop cable level, those are some of the contributing factors that may lead to a floating neutral. At the meter box level, we have this important device here, which is referred to as a cutout. The cutout has this part where we have the face fuse, and we also have this part which is also carrying the contact point for the neutral, meaning the incoming neutral has a contact point here for the outgoing neutral. Let us see how it is. So if you get rid of that, we will see that there is this particular part here. This case is definitely where the neutral have to be bonded with the earth connection as well as the point where we have the output for the neutral. So this is the line for the face and this is the point of contact for the neutral. Top boss, it is important for you to note this that whereas the face can be switched in a manner of removing that fuse and returning it back like so. The neutral on the other hand has been made in a manner that 
Once this connection has been done whereby you will connect the drop cable at this particular point and have the neutral exit here, there is no way for switching it off because again you have these screws here. So at all times the neutral is continuing. So if at all there is a loose connection here, it will lead to a floating neutral. And when you place your tester, then it will mean that the tester will light up, meaning that there is a presence of current here that is floating and it is not returning or finding its easier path back to the source, which is the transformer. I would want to emphasize on an important feature of a consumer unit. A consumer unit has the neutral bars. For this one, I have two neutral bars. As you can see, my top boss. This neutral bars here, if at all you have connected any loose cable here, it will result to a floating neutral. Specifically for a circuit, let's say be it light or a socket or an instant shower head or an electric cooker in the kitchen. If that particular circuit has its neutral loosely connected or this particular screw is not tightly done, it means that there will be an issue there. It means the specific circuit will suffer a floating neutral. What if from the source or from the meter box, the main is not tightly connected to that MCB, there will also be an issue. And also from the MCB, that main that comes to feed this neutral bar or this neutral bars is loose, that will lead to a floating neutral. So the connection either way should be very, very tight. Now take a look at my chart here. I have a drop cable which is connecting these massive floors or this commercial property here. So a three phase here has this cable which has the red face, the yellow face, and the blue face. Now this cable here that has a neutral which is returning also to the source. Remember this single neutral cable is serving the three phases. If at all there is a loose connection on the neutral, it will lead to a serious, serious damage to property or appliances here. Sometimes you find that that issue is too huge and the neutral will now not operate and instead the return will find it using the arc connection to return to this particular point if at all the PME has been well connected. But again, it may lead to burning of this cable because that earth connection or that earth cable that is in this drop cable is too small and therefore it cannot act as a return path for all the faces, meaning that there will be heat due to very high resistance, therefore burning the cable. So the issue of a floating neutral is very serious and any connection that has been done, much emphasis should be done on the neutral cable. As I make a conclusion on this issue, another thing that leads to a floating neutral is definitely use of substandard electrical fixtures. If at all you used a consumer unit that is substandard, it will mean that over time there will be a compromise that will happen on the neutral connection. If at all the gadgets or devices that you use, let's say the switches are not of quality standard, it will mean that you will have a problem. For instance, at this point here where we have the DPMCB, taking in the neutral and giving an output that will feed to the neutral bar which is located in the consumer unit. If this device here is having an issue, it will definitely result to not switching this neutral from this point all the way to the bar. So that will definitely compromise on the circuit.
Also, when you are talking about the switches, for instance, this is a Hitas DP MCB. This switch switches both the phase and the neutral. If at all this switch is not the standard one, then it will not properly switch the phase and the neutral at the same time, meaning that there will be an issue there. Also, if at all the connection done on this switch is shoddy, there will be a problem. The same happens when we are talking about this cooker unit. The cooker unit should be connected in a manner that the connections or the screwing here is tightly done. Also, it should be a quality switch so that when switching, it has to switch both the face and the neutral properly at the same time. The reason why for double pole switching, it has to switch both the neutral and the face is so that simultaneously these circuit are switched at the same time and the neutral must also be switched. Thank you so much John from Eldoret Polytechnic for your question. I hope this video answers it well. Top boss salute and all the best in your studies.